My name is Matthias Aschel. I'm Technical Support and Application Specialist. Today I'm going to show you the Mars Filament Tracer for complicated cases. Here's a rough outline about the topics I'm going to talk about today. Um, the first one is the iterative tracing workflow using the wizard with multiple regions of interest. Then I want to show you some semi-automatic tracing with our AutoPass and AutoDAPS features. Some editing of the filaments using the combination of a filament traced with the wizard and also with manual tools. And I also want to explain you and show you some of the various editing functions in the Edit tab. Last but not least, I will show you some other tools or some situations that you, where you can use the filament tracer. Let's start. The first part will be the iterative tracing. And we're using the wizard that you have seen in the previous seminar about filament tracer. But this time we're using regions of interest, multiple ones, to create our filament. I will just repeat the normal wizard procedure if you haven't seen the previous webinar. So here we go. This is one of our demo data sets. And if you start the filament tracer, usually here you see these all options, calculate diameter, and the segment region of interest is what we will do later. But right now I'm just repeating what we what you've seen, maybe not before. So we go through the wizard step by step. We select the starting point, in this case 11.5, that's here for the SOMA, or at least the part that we see of the SOMA. And we have some seed points, so these are points along the dendrites that will be detected and used for the tracing later on. So you can select one size for SOMA, and you can select one size for seed points. If we start doing this, you can see the blue big sphere here, that's our starting point, the SOMA, and here you have the gray ones, these are the waypoints, the seed points that you've selected before. Here in the histograms you can select more or less of them, and the same for starting points. This is basically a spot detector that you might have seen in other webinars before, it works this way. Usually you have these histograms but sometimes the selection doesn't work. So here you can select way more, so it's detecting some somewhere here, but that wouldn't work right away. If you have trouble the setting or finding with the threshold here in the, in the histogram, finding a proper starting point, you can just deactivating it and then go into the, the data set and right clicking and you can set one on your own. So use the shift button, hold down the shift button, your keyboard and the right, right mouse button to place or remove a starting point. If you use the shift button and you're using the left mouse button, you can select, let me put one here, you can put some, some C points here if you would miss them. So these are some manual editing functions here already. If you go to the next step, so it's now tracing the neuron, adding the passes. Now I can select the diameter, that's something here, threshold. But this was presented previously. And normally you'll be done. You could now do also some spine detection, but normally you would be done now. So you have one type of seed points one type of size of starting points that you can select. This demo data set has one cell here and all branches, well they are similar in the size, but if you have huge data sets or bigger neurons where the processes get thinner, it might be difficult with just one parameter, one size setting to get all the branches and everything. And you would need to place a lot of them manually and if different cells come close together, it might also be tricky. And this is where the iterative tracing with multiple regions come into play. I opened the data set with three cells here. And as you can see, 
processes are there, a lot of them close together. And usually that will be tricky if we just open the filament tracer and um, remove this one to save some time. And for the process to put in 1.2 in this case, should be fine. And you can see the starting points are pretty well detected, and we have tons of little seed points here. But you can also see that there are some weaker somas that now will also get a lot of these seed points that we don't want. Try to deselect them. Then we also lose some of the processes. So still, that's, that's a bit tricky here. And if we continue, it will do the tracing. This can take quite some time. So in the meantime, let, let's open the data set again. Um, and let's start doing the tracing. But in this case, we do a region of interest. The region of interest is only available for the outer pass. For the threshold, you can see that's not available. So that's only an option for the outer pass where I do tree like structures. And we start with the region of interest. Let's focus on one of the cells. Where we want to start the tracing. Good, so we can capture this first one here, the cell. The next step, it looks initially the same as in the wizard that I showed you before. So we start here with the wizard, with the diameter. Let, let's put in a 1.5. We saw that the 1.2 is a little bit small. And now we just get Seed points and the starting point here in the sub volume. And now we can start the tracing here as well. And instead of working on the whole data set, we now go through step by step um, with different regions. Okay, can have a look at the other one, it should be still processing. Yeah. Back here. So we already got a little tracing. Doesn't look that bad. Okay, we don't do spines. So we continue here. And now this step is new. Normally you don't see this without the regions. Kind of expected here. And we could now apply this to the entire image. That's an option that you also see in the sports side of surfaces. Um, if you've seen the, or used the, these tools before or seen the other webinars. In this case, this is a new option. We want to do additional regions. And we jump right into uh, the region step again. Um, so that's this one here that we have. Um, and we want to do Next region, oh, this smaller. And just focus on the on the main branch here. So let's have a look. enough here okay and now there's also an additional option so when you run the wizard and you 
In the first region, you just detect a new starting point and you enter the seed point size. In this case, we use the existing dendrite because we want to extend it. So we don't want to have a new starting point and start from scratch. So we, we use the existing one and want to extend it. And as you can see, the starting point is grayed out, but the seed points are still there. So you can change the seed point size. So if the processes get thinner, the further you go away from the soma, from the starting point, you can make adjustments here. So for now, this is still here, that's still more or less the same size, so should be fine. And we get seed points again. Now here all along this. And we do detection. Switch to the other one, have a look if it's progressed. Oh, progressed a bit. Okay, come back here. You can see if I turn off the channel, so there's an additional structure traced. Oh, there's something we need to change, we need to edit manually. If you want to follow one of the side branches here, for example this one, you can now do an additional region here and um, another one crossing. Maybe we go back, so we can still go back. We also change this region. side branch. And here we are with the seed points. If we do tracing, we now got a side branch attached to the main branch. So you can now repeat this for the whole thing or that's another thing I want to show you here, region number four. Um, you can do multiple cells. So if we go over to this one. Oops. Here. This one on the side. Make this smaller. In this case, we don't want to use the existing dendrite. We want to start a new neuron. So let's start here again, diameter. The process here, the dendrite is a bit smaller than the other one. So 1.2 should still be fine. We have a starting point. We have some seed points. You can play around with these settings here. And then start processing. And we get this one. And we can do additional regions. So that's here. Yeah. 
existing one continue with this see points so it's the same process you can see it's the wizard again and again but you're processing processing the image step by step and even if in a dense image like this uh, you can get pretty pretty good results there If you're done with it, you traced everything, you can say all done, and then just finish the wizard, and here you go. These are our two little neurons, and here, when you have the regions, they need some, some adjustment there. But basically, this is how you process things step by step. And this can be, well, as it is local, a bit faster than doing the whole data set. If you have a look here, that's still in the step fast marching for the whole data set. So if you're just interested in one or two cells and even in this relatively smaller data set, it might be faster to work with regions. Next up is the semi-automatic tracing and I'm going to show you the AutoPass and AutoDepth drawing functions in Imaris. Let's switch to Imaris. So I've chosen a rather simple example here, with just a few branches, but I want to show you how you can trace this manually, dendrites, and we will also create spines in different ways here. So let's start with the manual tracing by creating a filament object. And if you have seen one of the other webinars before, there's this skip automatic creation button here on top of it, so you can skip the wizard and go directly into the manual editing. This takes you to the draw tab here. And on top you can see the different methods um, how to draw manual dendrites and spines. So there's the auto pass, auto depths and the manual drawing. So the auto pass will help you by drawing it. It will calculate in the background with a pretty smart algorithm and trace um, the filament in the background and you just need to move the mouse roughly along the filament to get a tracing there. With the auto depths you have to move along the intensity and then it's placing or creating the filament along the intensities there. And the manual one is really you're drawing on a slicer and you're drawing it manually along this so that's pretty well suited for example for electron microscopy. Next thing you can see is a setting. There's a diameter that you can enter. So that's pretty much like the seed points where you give the software an idea how thick things should be. You can set the type that you want to draw, like the dendrite or a spine. So you can manually create both of these things here. You can select a different channel. If the spines are labeled in, a, in another color and another channel, then you would have to select it here from this drop down list. The button set selection as starting point, that's something I'm going to show you while we create the filament. We have some correction options here, like the automatic centering and the automatic diameter calculation. This will run in the background once you've drawn a filament part. This will be done there. The centering will happen immediately. Usually you can turn it on. That's quite useful there. Next we have some view options like the torch view. This can help you in dense neuronal networks to well, have a better orientation while you are drawing. If you are still on the right dendrite filament or if, if the software is switched there. Full view is what we have now. So you're seeing the whole data set. Everything's normally rendered. If you switch to the torch view it's a bit dimmer and you can see that's like here, like a little torch, there's a circle highlighting where you are. Now in this data set things are pretty obvious so we won't need it here. The depth visibility, that's like using clipping blanks on the data set and you can limit this front and back and then if you rotate you can see that's it's working like clipping blanks. It works better on, on 
deeper and larger data sets. We don't need this again here. Okay, let's start drawing. And if you need some help, just hover over the method or any of these controls and you get some tooltip here. So you can see shift right clicking will set a starting point. So holding down the shift key using the right mouse button will set your starting point. And if you have the shift left click, or if you use the shift left click, you will actually create a pass. So how does it look like? So we need the diameter here. Uh, we want to draw a dendrite, the channel is probably set. So the diameter is something that you need to measure to give the software an idea what to look for and to well also get a, um, a thickness there. If you don't want to have it uniformly, you want some information about the diameter, then check the automatic diameter here. But let's measure the diameter first by going to the slice view. I think you know this from other tutorials if you have other webinars that you've seen from our series. So here you slice view, just click twice, you get a little measurement, and then here on the right side, the distance. So we used this tool also before. Okay, let's start here at the bottom. So I'm holding down the shift key on my keyboard and pressing the right mouse button. And now you can see a little sphere down here, science sphere. And you see this yellow line that's following my cursor. And it's like, like magnetic, it's sticking to the, to the filament here. So whatever I draw, you can see it's following. So that's the, the smart, algorithm that I mentioned, it's doing this in the background, so it's following here. Okay, let's draw a main branch and then we do some side branches. So holding down the shift key now, left clicking on the mouse has created this branch. You can see the line, but there's still this yellow line, it's trying to draw to create something, still from the starting point. And that's not good if we do a, a branch here, we would have twice the main branch up to, to this area here, and then it's branching off. That's nothing that we want to do here, so we want to create a branch from this position here. And this is where we use the set selection as starting point. So the selection, if you look closer, is still the main line here that's in yellow, that's just one pixel wide, I hope you can see it. And if I say set a starting point, you can see that this changes. So now the new yellow line is attached to the main branch that we've drawn before. And we can now just add another branch here. If we go up here, we can add another one here. So I'm holding down the shift key and left clicking to create these. And the same works on this side here. So now if I want to set this branch here as my new selection, I need to switch to the Edit tab briefly, select it so it turns yellow. You can see this, it's, it's not a big difference in color, but it turned yellow. And now I'm pressing Set Selection as starting point again. And you can see I can draw now branches from there. So going from here to here, this one, and here's another one. Always holding down the Shift key, pressing the left mouse button. So to create a branch from this one, just going back here, select it, that's yellow, going back to the draw tab, selection is starting point, and here we go. Okay, so we've drawn our, our filament. If we go to the settings and go to cylinder, we get a better idea here. So that's our one. If we switch to the cone rendering, we get some, here you can see some diameter information. This was all done in the background. Okay, let's switch to, oh, let's use the cylinder here. Now I want to add some dendrite, uh, some spines to the dendrite. So I'm clicking on spine here. It's on the same channel, so the spines are on the same channel. And I want to add them to the main branch here. So making sure that my main branch is selected. Now you can see this much better. I 
starting point, have the spine selected, and with the diameter, spines are usually thinner than the dendrite, so adjust the setting and, and make it a bit smaller. Otherwise you end up with spines that are the same size of, of the filament, of the dendrite, and that's usually not the case. So we can draw here, you can see a different color. We can draw some, some spines. Okay, if you have a neuron with lots of spines, that might be a bit cumbersome. In this case, you can combine this manual drawing with some wizard help. So we can jump into the wizard. If we go here to the creation tab, that's usually where you can rebuild or recompute your, your data. And if you click on, on spines, detect spines, thinnest diameter, maximum length, length, let me make this a bit shorter. Um, we just press this to get to the next step. So we are right now in a wizard. We created everything there. I didn't keep the original data. You can keep your manually drawn one. There was a checkbox for this. So that's your wizard here. Just for the example, let it calculate. Now you can see we have still our dendrite here, but now the spines are created within the wizard and we added them to our filament. So you can combine in Imaz a lot of these tools, manually created ones and wizard based ones. Okay. Now I want to show you some manual tracing, or well, there's really manual tools here in the Imaris filament tracer. Here for creating filaments manually is really the manual one, we call it manual here. When I click on this you can see it switches to the orthogonal view instead of the perspective one. And we get a slicer view here for going through the data set. This will be the canvas on which we draw the filament here. So we can hide the volume object here. Let's reset the view and have a look where we start here at the SOMA. Um, this option here, the automatic placement, this will change the slicer where you are drawing automatically. Otherwise, you would need to adjust it with up and down keys, things like this, which is not that well comfortable. So let's start and let's start drawing. You can see it changes, changes the slices automatically. I just hold down the shift key and the mouse button and start drawing. And compared to the other two modes, you can see it's not, there's no snapping, there's no, no help there, except for the automatic placement. And um, so if we look from the on the side, you can see that the line is really in 3D. If we go to perspective, so the line is in 3D here through the data set. So the automatic placement here really worked. And now you could continue and do other stuff, but I rarely use it. And normally the auto depth and the auto pass work for most most of the cases are now way more convenient to use and easier for the drawing instead of this one because you have to really be on the filament to trace it there if you get off the track then it will draw there and it might draw on the bottom of your data set and that's a bit yeah you need to be more precise than the other modules which help you placing your drawing inside of the filament automatically Okay, so much for showing you the three methods. Um, now let's go to, to the next topics. This is the next part of the webinar, editing of filaments. And I'm going to show you this on the data set that we've created before. So here, this data set, we created these filaments with 
the multiple regions, so with the iterative approach here. As you can see, there was a little artifact here created by the setting, the creation of the regions of interest here. So in the seminar before this one about filament tracer, you saw some basic editing functions. Um, this might be repetitive, but for people who haven't seen the other webinar, let's go into this. So going to the edit tab, that's the one with the pencil. You have different options here with the mouse. You can select just points that are the smallest part of a filament, whole segments. If I click on this, you get a whole segment here. Or whole branches. So if I click on this, you get the whole branch with the things here. Or the whole filament. So this would just select the whole filament in just this form. Now here for the thing we are planning to do is connection between this point and the point below here, one of these. So first of all, we need to get rid of the part here, of this vertical part. And what we're doing is we're going to point, we select here one of these segments, and then delete it. So there are a lot of buttons, and here's the selection region, or selection functions, and there's a delete. And when you click on this, you can see that there's a little cut being made here. The same thing is done here, so we are selecting one of the points here and also delete them. If we now switch to segment, we can just select this part here in between and delete again. So we have removed this vertical connection here. Now we want to join this end here with this part. And for joining them, we need to select the point um, on this one side, and we need to select the point on the other side. And in this case, hold down the control key on your keyboard. That's for PC. And here in the new version, you can see oops, that there's a little plus sign, minus sign appearing here, giving you a hint on your mouse cursor that you are adding stuff. On the Mac, use the command key instead of the control. Okay, now that we selected these two parts, we want to connect them. In this case, we want to join them. And the join function is down here in process intensity based. So this is the controls here, in the lower left. And for the selection, you can see there's a join button. That's right here. And this will join the uh, filament parts here. Now, intensity-based means that it uses the intensity in the image to do the tracing. And here we have our, well, dendrite. And if we now press the Join button, there's some calculation done, and the thing is joined. Now you can see, as a result of the different spot sizes that we used in the different regions, what I showed you before, so you can change with the iterative approach, you can change the parameter of the seed points if you're going further away. So in this case, the dendrite here is pretty much the same size along all this. And if we want to recalculate this, we can click on segment here, and the whole thing or even the whole branch, so if you click again, so it changes the whole branch. And then you could recalculate the diameter for the selection. Now this will get bigger one here. And you need to watch out here the diameter that you enter. So that's the smallest diameter. If you put in a one and then click on diameter, it gets a bit thinner. And it's actually not that bad, the size. It looks a bit, bit big here. but the thing is big in this part here. Now the bottom part doesn't match, doesn't match properly here, so yeah, why not selecting everything and let it calculate the diameter again? And now things look more normal here. Okay, keep in mind that you can't get smaller diameters than the one that you enter here. So if you enter a one micrometer diameter, Nothing will be smaller in the tracing here. So that's the smallest thing you will get. Okay, so that's that's basically the editing here. Now you saw that filament tracer is special. We have created objects here, well, with the wizard, 
we went in, we can edit, we can draw, we can do all kinds of stuff. And another special part is that with other wizards that we don't have in this form is that you can go into the wizard again, you can keep the data, that's this part here, and we can go to filaments. So this looks like the normal um, wizard we have. We have segment region of interest, we keep it checked in this case. We can go in, we get a region of interest, we move it up here, we want to continue with our drawing. And you can see there's the option use existing dendrite. I can enter the seed point diameter like before. Go to next, get some seed points up here. You can see there's little dots here, we can have a bit more of them. Go to next, and it's calculating, it's doing the tracing, and we just added the part. You could do detect spines, which we don't have here, and then just well, at this point say, okay, add additional regions or all done. And here we say all done. And uh, you can now, if we select the filament, that's one filament here. So we just added a part. You can go into the wizard again. You can add new parts. You can keep the existing data. That's something that you really can't do in other wizards. You start a wizard and you start over. And so that, that's one specialty. And even more interesting or more powerful is that you can now continue. Click on draw, um, selecting, let's make this just a point. Um, selecting this one, set it as starting point. And now I can continue drawing here and add parts by manual, completely manual stuff. And here you can see that's a bit more denser network. So if I'm switching to the torch view, that's a little help, like a little yeah, torch. I knew this. So I can I can really add other parts here. Doing the selection here, starting point. And I can move up. The starting point and continue drawing. And if you see the line disappear, then the algorithm cannot detect a proper path to your cursor. So that's that's a sign that you should stop here. Um, set this as new starting point and start from this again. Um, that's sometimes the algorithm is telling you, okay, no, that's not working for me. And then do it step by step. Again, a starting point. Okay, if we turn off the torch view, go back to full view. Yeah, something you can see here. Okay, starting point, and then just keep drawing. Okay, yeah, it's it's splitting, so that's when we have to decide this. But you can see we just drawn along the dendrite here, and with multiple techniques. So we combined wizard-based approach with multiple regions, the iterative approach. We edit the filament here. We connect the parts. We disconnect the parts. We remove parts, and then we kept the data and started the wizard again. So that's something really we don't have in other modules that makes the filament tracer so powerful. It's a bit more, well, needs a bit more time to get into this module, but it allows you to do a lot of stuff that, that's really a power tool here for doing all this tracing stuff. So that's one thing, combining everything here you can do. Other features, now we've drawn this and sometimes you think, okay, that's a bit off with the, with the whole, the whole branches there. You can see that one object here. We can select other parts, clicking on them. And then we can say, okay, center this. It's doing a recalculation, looking for, for the brightest center and aligning it. 
sometimes this can help or doing the diameter calculation again that's something we also did before um, when we draw the thing we have the option to decide if we want to draw a new spine or if you want to draw a new dendrite if you've drawn the wrong part so um, if you would by accident have drawn a, a dendrite a uh, spine instead of a dendrite um, here on the selection you can assign this as dendrite or spine so just click on it it gives it different uh, properties so if I do this as spine then it turns blue so we can see that's a huge spine now <laughs> not, not really probably go back to dendrite and that's fine here so these are some editing functions here um, one thing that sometimes is asked in well I'm in support so I sometimes get these these other exotic questions and one is um, can I export this I want to calculate the whatever resistance or anything on this and yes there's this button here that says export and this writes hoc files which are for software neuron and there you can calculate this that's basically a text file containing the positions xyz positions of all the segments um, giving you a 3d model um, of your filament here so that's another thing you can use for further processing that okay um, another nice feature that sometimes is used if you want to well, calculate the length from one endpoint to the starting point um, and you want to show this you want to select this um, would be by clicking on an endpoint here and then say pass so that's the button here pass and then it will find that's like a route planning feature so it will find the shortest pass to the starting point so it's like black in your car route planning from start point to your to your goal and um, so just this one and then it shows here that's the shortest pass to the starting point and yeah you can now copy this into a new filament into a new one if you want just statistics for this one for the selection um, so there's a use the duplicate button here that's in the statistic tab this little leaf and then say duplicate selection and then you just get this filament and it it's just the shortest path from this endpoint to the starting point okay so much for the editing features so far and um, I think there's a lot of, of things you you've seen now combination of different techniques in this very powerful and that makes it also a bit more complex module but if you work with it frequently I think you will master this pretty soon now last but not least I want to show you some off-track uses of the filament tracer so off-track because this is not directly a, an application that you would well, think of using the filament tracer usually but one question that comes up once in a while is I want to measure the parameter around the cell can you do this in Imaris? well we cannot do this for for whole data sets but if you have some a few measurements to do then the filament tracer can help you here and I'm going to show you two examples one in 2d and one in 3d and which tools to use there for a 2d measurement here for the parameter so that's a 2d data set see and we're creating a filament tracer and skip the automatic creation and in 2d you can use the auto depth or the manual one so in this case I want to show you the auto depth for the diameter um, it's good if you know how thick the wall is this makes the tracing a bit a bit easier and um, so here measure this and that's that's like almost close to eight micrometers so put in an eight and then we can start drawing holding down the shift key and just start drawing if you have some um, jaggies in there uh, don't worry you can also stop earlier here we switch to the edit tab we use the join to close it and then we use the center function 
Bono multiple times. And then it fits this into the, the center here of the membrane. So it's treating the membrane then much like a filament. Um, we can hide the beginning point in the settings tab and you can see that's really closed. And in the end, go to the statistics and if you select the dendrite links, that's in micrometer, that's your length of this outline parameter. I have chosen another demo file of, of our demo data sets. And in this case, I want to draw a parameter around, around the nucleus. So here we also create a filament object, skip the automatic creation, and we use the manual tool in this case. Um, the auto depths would just jump up and down in the 3D data set, so you cannot draw around this. In this case, using the manual tool, but not using the automatic placement. So we want to draw on the canvas. So I'm turning off the volume object and I'm looking for a slice where I want to start to draw. So I just hold on shift key, left mouse button, and then I can start drawing. And it will follow my mouse here. And There's no automatic closing, so if we hide the beginning point, you can see this. So going to the Edit tab again, if we select this, and I might choose the blue one, say Join, and then the thing is, is closed. And going to the statistics again, if you look for then right lengths, well, that's our length around the nucleus here. So that's a parameter. And it's just for drawing. Maybe this is some inspiration and you might find other cases using the filament tracer um, for different measurements, not just filamentous structures. So this is it. This is basically the webinar about some complicated cases and maybe, yeah, the last one is also a bit inspiring for using it for different things. Thank you for joining and yeah, see you in one or the other webinar maybe. Thank you, Matthias, for this wonderful presentation. Uh, it was really great. I hope it opened eyes for our to our users for uh, another usage and have this uh, filament pressure in complicated cases. So uh, we had some wonderful questions coming in during the webinar. So yeah, I think you're, uh, I don't see your screen yet, but I think it's coming. So the first question would be uh, about manual corrections. Uh, is there an option to uh, yeah. for undo the uh, cor corrections you've done? Is there an option to undo? Hi. Voice, is it okay? Can you hear me? Yes, it's, I, I think ah. it's fine. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, there's an undo. Usually, um, if you go to preferences, just checking here, um, there are four steps for undoing um, things. Um, and if we, yeah, let's draw a filament here in this one, um, again. I um, think I, uh, I don't see, see? There, there is no, uh, I, we don't see your desktop, Matthias. Can you try to share? I think there, you have four desktops, so just pick the one with, uh, pick the first one. Yeah, okay, it's good. Is it now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, if we if we just stick with this data set here that we also had in the webinar, um, for example, if you draw some additional stuff here, 
then just go to edit and there's, there's an undo. And you can see this one just disappears. So yeah, up to four by default. If you need more undo, um, you can increase this in the preferences. Just go to calculation there and just, just increase the number and then you have more undo steps um, for editing if something goes wrong. Okay, uh, thank you. Another question about the editing and uh, when will you use the correction? So when when would you check the automatic correction, uh, automatic center correction? In which cases? In which cases? It depends on the data set. If, if you draw, I mean, the drawing is based on the intensities and sometimes your samples are a bit more spotty. And if you draw it manually, uh the result might be a bit jaggy um so if you say okay that's due to the labeling it's a spotty labeling then try the auto correction there if it works better and puts it better in place um the whole pass the whole thing um so that's it depends on the data set i mean in this case it's the the center line is pretty well stained um yeah, I wouldn't really need it there, but yeah, depends. If it's really more spotty, like here the side branches, and you you would get some really um, yeah jaggy results. Um, may try the center. It's taking into account a bit more of the tracing there to find things. Okay, uh, thank you. We have another uh, great question from Yannick. Uh, it's not about manual. Uh, so the question is, do you recommend any extra pre-processing steps to have a better automatic filament tracing like background subtraction or contrast enhancement? Can help. Um, what helps most usually is doing a, a surface first, cut out most of the filament. So don't do it too precisely. So um, if you have some background noise, it, it will increase the, the calculation speed also if you remove the background. So um, let me see in this example, do we have a background? No, it's all zero already. Um, usually the idea, just to give you an idea, um, creating a surface and make this rather big because you mainly want just the filament here. and yeah, finish this and then go to the edit tab of the surfaces and there's under edit, there's this mask all. And then just set here the voxels outside of the surface to zero. This will remove the background and this will speed up the processing because the algorithm, the fast marching algorithm for connecting, for doing the tracing, um, this will ignore zero values and it will not try to trace there. So this can speed up the processing and much, uh, well, a lot. And it will also avoid any, sometimes you have some cross connections in the background where some labeling is there for on the, on the background. And this would remove these, yeah, wrong traces also. So that's that's one thing to hit, to do here. So doing a channel mask, as we call it. And um, you get a second channel then, I mean, in this case, it's the same, but this second channel would have zero in the background and then tracing will be faster and you might have less um, false branches across different um, neurons if you would have multiple ones. So yeah, in general, anything you can remove background signal, that's a good idea. Okay, thank you a lot. I think there is, there is, these are all questions we had for today. So we can wrap it, up, wrap it up. Again, it was great webinar, so thank you a lot. And for everyone, the recording will be available on our website. So uh, you will get the link as registered, but also if you go to our website and webinar section, and just type homeschool, you will see this recording and recording of the previous webinars from the series. So thank you a lot. And I think we can uh, wrap up the webinar. And uh, please remember about the upcoming webinars in the series. There are still a few more to come. Uh,
for you about how to automate your work in MRIS. Uh, we'll also present Vantage and maybe how to write and use some of the extensions. So thank you and have a good day or uh, good afternoon.